Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV. My name is Ben, and normally we do dumb stuff on this channel, as you've seen uh, by the last couple of videos. <laughs> we do some pretty dumb stuff. But today we're actually going to be doing more cool stuff, and uh, for a change, we're going to do some Porsche content. This is a 2008 Porsche Cayenne finished in Grandpa Green, which I'm told by the owner that this is going to change. They're going to redo the paint probably put a wrap on it or something like that. And they went ahead and had the wheels done before they brought it to me. That's why the wheels are brand new painted and they're gold. They don't exactly match the green, but I think he's gonna be doing something that's gonna look good in the end. So don't judge too much on the wheel color because it's not the final product. But anyway, this is a Cayenne S. It used to be an S, uh, but this is the V8 version. It's, uh, it's a pretty decent car actually. Um, this is a little bit higher miles, but it's still, you know, pretty clean and pretty nice. Got the classic fogged out headlights. Now, an interesting fact, if you don't know about the Porsche Cayenne, it does have a low range transfer case, which I didn't know until recently. I thought these were just all wheel drive. This does have the disadvantage of being independent suspension and it does not flex. It has about 11 inches of flex, which is about the same as my Bronco Sport. We are going to put a lift on it. You know, we're gonna put some bigger tires on there eventually. So I'm looking forward to all those things, but today we're going to focus on installing the lift kit for this bad boy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, step one on the installation is to measure the height. And how I do it is I measure from the floor to the top edge of the fender well. And as you can see here, we've got about 32 and three quarters on the front. And 33 and three quarters on the back. So it already sits a bit higher in the back, but we're gonna do a two inch kit, which is going to lift the front and back evenly. So it'll be, the back end will still sit a little bit higher whenever it is finished, but that is step one. Now, under the hood, let's talk about what's going on under the hood of a Porsche Cayenne. Everything is covered up by these stupid panels. It makes it more work than it would normally need to be. I know they do that for aesthetics, but you know, who cares? It's, nobody's gonna open the hood and look at this. So first thing you gotta do is unclip all of these clips. And most of these were actually missing before I started work on this. I do have some, but I went ahead and took them off just so we could keep the video moving. Um, basically you got a clip here, 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 and here. And I'm gonna take this off right here. And that's gonna reveal the bolts right there for the upper strut mount. And just do that on both sides. This side, same thing. Um, I don't know if it's a common problem with these, but the washer fluid reservoir lid was like crumbling to dust. I was very careful to take it off and not break it, but if I squished it with my fingers, I could break it into a million pieces. Two clips here, two clips here, and then pull this piece up and off. That reveals access to the passenger side upper strut mounts. What's it caught on? There it goes. Now, the last part you're gonna have to access is underneath here. There's actually strut bolts buried up under this. And the same thing for the other side. Now, at least the other side has a access panel that you can use. Get out of there. Why is that stuck? So just pull this panel out here. Under here, there's actually a bolt in there. You can't see it. You can't get your fingers on it. And the only way to really have uh, easy access to it would be to remove this and this probably, and probably this, and probably this, and probably all of that. But we're not gonna do any of those things. One of the special tools that you're gonna need in this installation is a set of wobble sockets. Basically, it's a socket with a universal joint on the end. That's gonna allow you to access all these bolts that are hidden and buried underneath all of these panels. All right, first thing you wanna do is remove the brake and ABS lines off of the spindle here. And it's pretty easy to do. You're gonna pull this off here like this and pull this off like that. Push it over just a little until it comes off like that. Now this one's a little bit tricky, but you're gonna to wanna to push down right there on that little clip and then it just comes out and then this turn and then it just comes out like so so that's the brake line disconnected so that's out of the way now oh and there's one more excuse me it's right here there's this one and that comes off and there you go 
Now that's out of the way, we can continue on. Uh, next thing you wanna do is remove this nut right here, and that is a 18 millimeter. Just gonna use a hammer and just tap. There you go. And it just comes out like that, no problem. All right, the next thing you wanna do is unclip this harness right here. And there's a little cover that comes off. Just pull that off and it just, well, it should, I think there's a, you have to push this little thing right here to unclip it, but it just comes out. Um, and then you can remove this whole assembly. All right, now you can grab this bolt out of right here and uh, just, Push the spindle out of the way so you can get your socket on there. I'll just pull that out. Okay, push that out of the way. Loosen this bottom one up too. And then push that out of the way. And now we've got to do this bolt here. That's out now, we gotta get the top bolts out up here so we can get the strut out of the car. Now there's one here, one here, and one there. And this one here, and right there. This bolt back here is a lot more of a challenge. Now what you have to do is get up in there. The tricky part is getting the tool onto the head of the bolt. And once you get it on, um, it just comes out. So just, just keep that in mind. This bolt is a real big pain in the butt. Now we're gonna remove the strut from this assembly here. It's just a couple of bolts. 12 millimeters. All right, and there you have it. All right, now we're gonna remove these studs right here. And I would recommend placing this on something soft. I have a little piece of rubber right here on the, on the jack pad. I'm gonna set that there just so that it doesn't break. And gently tap these out. You don't have to hit them very hard. And they just come right out. But again, you want to be very careful not to break this. There you go. Not so bad. And these just, we won't be using those. All right, installing the front spacer is very straightforward. You're just going to place the spacer in here and slide the bolts through like that. All four of these go in like so, and then so then you just mount the spacer to that, like this. And I say it's easy, but I'm making it look difficult. And really, it is easy. So you just push the bolt through and uh, get the nut started. And this kit does come with nylock nuts, so they won't come loose. Once they're tight, that's it. They're on. No worries on the bolts and nuts backing out. I'd say get all four of them threaded in where you tighten them up. You can use the 13 millimeter socket on the nut and then a 10 millimeter wrench on the bolt. And you could reverse that if you wanted and use a 10 mil socket there, but it doesn't really matter. Just tighten them up. Like so, easy. There you go. There's your strut spacer mounted. The next step is to go ahead and reinstall the, the whole assembly back into the car, which is not going to be easy, I'm gonna tell you right now. And part of the reason is because it's bigger than it was, and the other reason is it is heavy. Putting the strut back in is a lot more difficult than you would think. 
because it is taller. It doesn't quite fit. So I'm gonna give you a quick shortcut on how to get the strut in. It makes it much, much easier. What you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen these main subframe bolts. There's two, they're really um, like the two biggest bolts that hold this main frame up to the body. It's a 21 millimeter bolt, and all you gotta do is loosen them so that this whole thing drops down just a little bit. Once we have this all back together, we'll just tighten it back up. Super easy, but that gives you an extra inch and a half of room to slide this assembly back in place and get it back up into the car where it's supposed to go. So a little hack for you. All right, now that you've got the assembly back in the car, you're going to simply line it back up where it was. There are alignment pins that make sure that it's in the right spot so you can't mess it up. And this is definitely another one of those situations where it'd be nice to have a helper because lifting this up and holding it in place is not an easy task by any stretch, but I'm gonna try because I don't have a helper. So I think if you can get one of the bolts started, then it'll hold it in place just enough for you to get the rest of the bolts started. So I'm gonna try to get that bolt started right there while I'm lifting up. I mean, it is absolutely easier said than done, but do like I just did, not too bad. There you go. Bolt the rest of that in. We're gonna start clipping wires back in and finish putting the rest of this bottom part back together. And you know, basically, the simple version of this is you're just gonna reassemble it in reverse order of disassembly. And uh, you can skip to the next chapter if you don't wanna see all that. But I am gonna show reassembling all of this. When I tell you this is a pain in the butt to get to that bolt, I'm not kidding. This is what I'm doing. Uh, you can see barely in my camera, you can see the bolt right there and you can see the socket. Um, I'm gonna have to actually move some stuff around to try to get that lined up, but that's the idea, um, I think, versus removing all of this stuff in here to just use this. I use a wobble socket and an extension, and eventually I'll get it on there and be able to tighten it up. It is a pain in the butt. You know, it's like um, it's a pain in the butt no matter what you do. So I think this will be easier, but there you go. Just wanted to show you how I did that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is reattach the, the bottom strut mount, which is that looks going to be pretty easy. Just push that down. Get it bolt threaded through and uh, you know just you know, jiggle it around or whatever you got to do to uh, get it back in place. There you go. It's easy if you just thread it through like that and then you can put the nut on like that. All right I want to talk about one thing real quick. We are going to re-loosen all of the suspension bolts with weight on the car and then re-tighten them. What I'm going to probably do is just lift it with the jack to put pressure on the suspension where it's going to sit when the car does have weight on it. Um, it's because it's easier to work on all this without the tires on. But you do have to do that so that everything is bolted together where it's supposed to be. So just wanted to talk about that. Make sure you guys get that done. We're going to wrap up the last of this and move on to the back. Now that we've got everything pretty much back together, we're going to tighten up these bolts and pull the subframe back up where it was before, just by tightening these back up. One more back here. The last thing we're going to do on the driver's side is tighten this bolt here, this bolt here. Uh, we'll reattach these wires here and we'll jack up the hub to make upper ball joint line up right here. And um, then we'll move on to the passenger side. All right, final step. This is kind of a big one. You want to loosen and retighten all of the bolts. These bolts here, this bolt, and then your sway bar end link bolts. All right, moving to the back suspension of the Cayenne, you've got basically a bolt there, and then there's four bolts that hold the upper mount. And you can't see them on the camera because it's really tight back here. But you can see I've, I've already started loosening that one. But there's four bolts that hold this in, and the only way to really get these out easily is with a swivel socket set, or if you've got an extension with the wobble socket end on it, then you can get an extension up in there to get those bolts loose. Other than that, we're gonna start with taking this bolt out here, and then work our way up to the other ones. This is an 18 millimeter bolt right here. Use an 18 millimeter wrench 
to hold the other side in place. There you go. All right, now these bolts back here are a 16, just like the front. And as you can see, I've already pre-loosened these just to save time in the video. There you go. Throw this over here so that it gets lost. Okay, next thing you wanna do is remove these four nuts on the top of the strut mount. 13 millimeter, come right off. And there you go. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward there. Now, the back spacer is going to mount back on to those studs there, and then it comes with its own studs that go through. All right, the next thing you wanna do is we go ahead and mount the spacer onto the strut itself, and you will reuse the OEM hardware on that, and then you'll tighten them up once you have all four of them on. All right, once you got all those tightened up, you're gonna mount this back in the strut mount here and just bolt it right through like so. The strut spacers come with their own studs and then the kit will come with these new nuts. These are nylock nuts, so they won't just come loose on you. All right, there's the finished product and we will be just putting that right back in the way it came out. All right, now that we've got the strut mounted, you can see the little green spacer. If you look really carefully, uh, nothing lines up now. The suspension's not connected to the strut right now, but it does not move at all. I can barely move the suspension right now. Sway bar's not connected either. So I have a feeling that all these bushings are holding it in place. And the fix for that is we're gonna loosen all of the bolts that hold these bushings in place and that should allow movement of the suspension to go down once we can line this back up we will then retighten everything with it on the ground because that will actually be the new ride height so that's the plan right now i think that's a 24. yep i don't think we have to take it out all the way just make it loose all right guys it's worth mentioning at this point that you really need to have like a a socket set and wrench set that goes all the way to 24 millimeter most metric wrench sets only go to 19 millimeters and that's not big enough for the porsche cayenne it needs big wrenches Yeah, that did absolutely nothing. It looks like we are gonna have to loosen every single bolt on this back suspension. And it just does not move. Loosening all the suspension on the one side helped a little, but when the suspension moves down, this arm here actually contacts the sway bar, which stops downward movement on that side. So now we're going to disconnect this side of the sway bar so that it will drop the rest of the way. Okay, now we got free movement on the sway bar, sort of. Man, everything is just so stiff. Doesn't make it easy to do this job. See, the, the sway bar is contacting it there, keeping this arm from going down. But now I've disconnected both sides and it hasn't helped. Okay, so I think what we're gonna have to do is completely remove the sway bar. <sighs> so much work. Easy to see why I don't do this for a living. Now, that's out of the way. Okay, now that we've got the sway bar loose and out of the way, we're going to be able to get better access on <clears throat> Wait, all right so as you can see we're we're a lot closer we removed the sway bar and all these bolts are loose now we could just about push down and get it to line up all right so for this part fuck something bit me this goddamn spiders 
There's spiders floating around on this thing and one of them got me. For this part of the install, you'd be better off having a helper. Someone can push down on this with their foot and another person can thread the bolt in right there. I'm here by myself, so I've got to improvise. It's really close though. Look at that. I mean, it's really close. <sighs> nope. How do you figure this stuff out? How do you make it work? I don't know. I don't have a decent set of pry bars either. Which sucks, because I, I think I could use one right now. It's just, everything's so rigid, it won't flex, nothing moves. Hmm. All these bolts are loose, by the way, and this still does not move. The suspension back here, I think it's just the design of it. It just does not move. is isn't good for off-roading. You want flex, you want movement. If you're climbing over an obstacle, you want it to be loose. Ooh, I didn't loosen that, did I? All right. I thought I had loosened all the bolts, but I found one that I forgot. And as soon as I turned that last bolt, the whole thing moved. So it is important to get every single one of them. Okay, so now all I have to do is push this into position. The bolt should go right in. Look at that. There you go, people. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Lord. And the sway bar is going to go on like so. Okay, how about that? We got it in there. So the key to doing the back suspension is you have to loosen every single bolt in all of these arms and that allows everything to to drop down a little bit in order for the bolt down here to line up you want to leave all these loose until there's weight on the car because you want to have this the bushings tightened in their normal position battery's dead on the light great all right that pretty much wraps it up for the installation on our 08 cayenne here for the two inch lift kit from hrg engineering and i wanted to just do one quick walk around and a measurement of the height difference before and afters Okay guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching all that. And if you are interested in the kit for the Porsche Cayenne, we do have them at hrgengineering.com. I will leave a link to that in the description below. So I really appreciate you guys watching to the end and I'll see you in the next video.